Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Richard Widmark in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the true story of a world of the dead. It's the documented account of one man left alone on a tiny Pacific island, a wasteland of no living thing, an island made up of three square miles of fear. The story is called How Long Is the Night? Our star, Richard Widmark. Well, frost my beard and call me winter if it's not Johnny Plugcheck. Yep, I'm here again, and you know what that means. I sure do, Johnny. It means I start reminding motorists to winterize, get their cars tuned up, get a change of oil and grease, put in antifreeze. And check those spark plugs, too. Right, Johnny Plugcheck, because spark plugs are the very heart of a car's ignition system. And when they're right, your chances for starting, even in the coldest weather, are better than ever. So, with cold driving days ahead, visit your nearest Autolite spark plug dealer. If replacements are needed, he'll recommend those world-famous ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, either standard or resistor type. To quickly learn the location of your nearest Autolite spark plug dealer, phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed How Long is the Night? A true story starring Mr. Richard Widmark and hoping once again to keep you in suspense. It was no different than any other night. It was hot. The same warm wind blew up from the south end of the island. Along the west beach, a line of dirty white foam spread out where the breakers came up on the sand. The moon had already gone down. Across the lagoon, there was nothing. No lights, no sounds. It was the same as the day before. The same smell hanging over the water and the land. The smell of a world gone dead. They came and woke us up a few minutes before 3 a.m. The three of us got dressed and they gave us breakfast. We checked our equipment, then we took our positions with the other men. We wore protective helmets with specially treated linings. Over the eyes, a pair of heavy-duty goggles. Jackets, trousers, gloves, all specially treated for protection. Our boots were spread with linings of lead. We waited. The dawn came up fast. I think it was about 5.30. We kept watching the horizon over the east, a faint outline of an island. The warnings began to come in over the earphones. Bomber boy one. Bomber boy one. Two minutes before actual time. Mark, two minutes before actual time. Adjust all goggles. Adjust all goggles. Stand by. The month was May. It was beautiful. I took one more look before I strapped on the goggles. The blue water of the Pacific. The green islands near and in the distance. The islands of Enuitak. The month was May. A piece of the earth was getting ready to die. Farmer boy one. Farmer boy one. One minute before actual time. Mark, one minute before actual time. Stand by. A single bird passed overhead, pointing for the horizon. There was the faint barking of a dog. Then it was quiet. I'm a boy one. Thirty seconds before actual time. Mark, thirty seconds before actual time. We waited for the split second. We waited for the sound of it. I'm a boy one. Fifteen seconds before actual time. Stand by. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. body of the ocean heaved and shuddered. The island shook. The sky seemed to fill to the bursting point. We knew what it was like. The most powerful atomic bomb yet conceived. The man next to me turned and stared. His mouth was open. There was only one thing to say. He 
said it. Warner? Warner? Yeah. That was the first one, but there were others. Our job was to photograph the results, everything. The test ran into weeks, months. The islands of Enoetak became a chain of black ruins, each of them festering with deadly radiation. After each explosion, we landed on the islands in the target area to photograph the remains. We got a first-hand look. It stayed with us. On the last day, I had two men working the cameras with me, Joe Harrison, Bert Pacelli, both good men. I couldn't blame either one of them. It just happened. Don't take any chances, Warner. Be careful. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. See you at Pearl. Joe, Bert, all right? Yeah, okay. All right, let her go. Now, what's with the old man? Nothing, Joe. Told me to remind you to be careful. Don't take any chances. Uh, not as long as I'm in this neighborhood. Uh, Adam bombs. Who needs them? Quit moaning. You got them. You check our Geiger counters this morning, Bert? Yeah, good shape. Brought the extra camera, too, just in case. Hey, have a look. What? ship pulling out over there. Kind of lonesome, huh? We'll be gone in the morning. Hey, Warner? Yeah? What are they going to do? Are they going to leave anybody around at all after we take off? Yeah, I suppose so, the Marine Guard. Why? Oh, nothing. Just wondering. Even the water looks bad. Enough hot stuff in it to bring it to a boil. Well, what do you think, Warner? You figure the natives will ever be able to come back? I suppose so. Ten, twenty years, maybe. What would they live on? I mean, the islands we covered already couldn't even find one green plant left. Everything burned to the roots. How would they live? Take it to the chaplain, Bert. I only work here. Dead land, dead water, nothing. Give it time. Probably wear off. That's the point. What? What happens if it doesn't? That's the last thing I can tell you from memory. What was said, what was done. The rest of us, just as I put it down in the log. The last trip. Island 27. It's a few minutes past 1,200. We've just landed at transfer point C. Most of the men have left here already. Skeleton crew standing by. There's one LST left at the landing pier. Harrison, Pacelli, and I move our camera equipment on board. 1220. We clear the reef and head north for Island 27. Weather overcast. Hey! That's it ahead, isn't it? 27? Uh-huh. Joe, want to take her a couple of points starboard? We'll put her right up there, ahead of the beach. Okay. Tub short, take their time. Too bad the plane couldn't have brought us in closer. Well, they still need landing strips. Brought us as far as they could. Hey, Warner? Yeah? This is number 27. I thought it was on the fringe of the blast area. That's the way I get it. Why? Try your Geiger counter. Kicking up? Give a listen. Yeah. Uh, how about that? Warm dose for a fringe area. Well, you got fair warning. As soon as we land, keep moving. Don't waste any time. Make it go as fast as you can. How about your sidearms, your canteen? All okay, I'm set. Yeah, same here. With any kind of luck, we'll be back at the base for supper. All right, Joe, hold it steady. Right. What's the matter? You look worried. I'm not worried. It's just another island. I'll feel better when we're leaving. Hey, take it easy. Won't hurt a bit. That's what they told them at Hiroshima. Thirteen thirty-five. We've landed on Island 27. It's about a mile wide, two and a half, three miles long. It's like a dozen other islands we've covered in the test area. The same smell of death and dying. As usual, our lives depend on our Geiger counters. They measure the radioactivity bombarding us as we move through the contaminated area. When the clicking sound is slow, the location's fairly safe. When it speeds up, it means the radiation's getting intense. As soon as we landed on the beach, my counters started turning over. We keep moving. The beach is littered with the remains of birds and fish, the life scorched out of them. The sand is burned jet black. There's no breeze. The sky is still overcast. We stop moving only once to lay out a plan of operation. What do you think? How do you want to cover it? Well, Joe, you take the upper end of the island, huh? Cover everything down to that first inlet there. See what I mean? Yeah, okay. And Bert, you cover from the inlet down to here, okay? Right. I'll work everything from here down to the lower end. Now keep moving, but don't rush it. 
and try and keep in sight as much as possible. If anything happens, if you need help, fire your sidearms. Two shots, got it? Sure, right. right. Okay, let's move. Thirteen forty. We've started photographing the island. Each of us carry three cameras: thirty-five millimeter black and white, sixteen millimeter for color, a four by five Graflex for the still shots. It's getting warmer. The overcast is starting to lift. In the sunlight, the island looks even worse. What's left of it? As far as I can see, every last bit of vegetation is dead, scorched out. A hundred yards back, I came across the remains of a wild pig. It must have been caught in a bomb flash. It's impossible to give you a description. 1415. The sky is clear, no wind. It's quiet except for the ticking of my Geiger County. I keep moving. Not a breath of wind. It's hot. I have to keep moving. There's plenty to photograph, good specimens. I've just taken some color film of a piece of coral. Looked like portions of it were melted by the heat of the blast. 1520. I heard the prearranged signal and I hustled down to the beach. Harrison and Pacelli were coming toward me, waving their arms. Yeah? What's the matter? I'm talking to you. Nothing serious, Warner. It's going to hold us up, though. What's the matter? Oh, we're short on film. You got any to spare? No, I'm in the same spot. More stuff to shoot than we figured, I guess. Uh, you didn't leave any supplies in the boat, did you, Joe? No, already checked it. I want to get something to eat. Getting a little hungry. Guess we should have brought along some rations, huh? Didn't figure it'd take this long. Well, all right, the two of you better take the boat and hustle back to the transfer point. Pick up some food, some more film. Okay. Anything special you want? A couple extra rolls of 16 color if they got it. Better make it fast if we're going to finish up today. Right. Come on, Joe. Yeah. Oh, hey, you sure you know the way back to our transfer point? I think so. We go due south to Island 20, down the east side, the second inlet. You got it. Meet you right here, about 1700, 1730. Yeah. Hey, don't worry if we're a little late. We'll make it. I watched the two of them climb in the boat, start up the engines, and head south for the transfer point. The boat gets small in the distance. In a few minutes, it's out of sight. 1540. I'm alone on the island. I'm alone. Fifteen forty-five. I found out a couple of minutes ago that there's something else alive on this island besides me. I spotted it moving in a charred tangle of brush about fifty yards inland from the beach. I took a look. It was a small bird, dark colored. Apparently, he'd been exposed in one of the test blasts. One whole side of him was a bright red burn. He had one leg and one wing. He floundered helpless on the ground. The one wing kept flapping. The first impulse was to pick him up. I reached over and held my Geiger counter directly above him. There wasn't anything else I could do. I killed him. Sixteen thirty. I've just shot the last of the film, and I'm back at our rendezvous point on the beach. Harrison and Pacelli haven't shown yet. I keep watching the horizon to the south. No sign of them yet. Seventeen hundred. Seventeen thirty. Still no sign. Eighteen thirty. It's practically dark. Just a glimmer of light over in the west. 1845. It's dark, pitching. No light, no sound. Only the Geiger County. I keep looking out in the darkness across the water. No sign of the boat. I can feel the panic starting in. Where are they? When are they coming back for me? Are they coming back at all? Auto 
Light is bringing you Mr. Richard Woodmark in How Long is the Night? Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Friends, winter weather's coming fast, and if you want your car to last, you'd better hurry and be wise... But well, now is the time to winterize. Right, Johnny Plug Check. It's time for a change of oil and grease, antifreeze. And check those important spark plugs, too. Because they're the heart of your car's ignition system. And when they're right, your chances of starting, even in the coldest weather, are better than ever. If replacements are needed, your Autolite spark plug dealer will recommend Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs. Both are ignition engineered. And both are original equipment on many makes of our finest cars. By the way, the Autolite resistor spark plug, with its exclusive built-in resistor, permits a wider gap setting, which makes possible advantages such as smoother engine performance, quick starts, and double spark plug life. So winterize right now. Please do. And check those important spark plugs, too. At your nearest Autolite spark plug dealers. And remember, from bumper to tail light. You're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Richard Widmark in Elliot Lewis's production of How Long is the Night? A true story, well calculated to keep you in suspense. It's been over five hours, maybe more. I don't know. My watch stopped half an hour ago with the radiation, I think. I haven't drunk any of the water from my canteen yet. I've decided to go slow with it. I haven't got any idea how long I'll be here. I keep walking. There's not much feeling left in my legs. If I could only sit down just for a minute. But I can't. I've got to keep walking. The Geiger counter is the only thing that keeps me awake. That and the motion of walking... The moon's been up for about two hours now. It throws enough light to give me some idea where I'm going. I don't know how long it's going to last. There's a high bank of clouds drifting toward it. If I only had a light. If the boat had only come back for me. What could have happened? Why would they do something like this to me? I keep walking. Alive. We, we, we've been over the whole island. It's, it's burned out. It's dead. I heard it. I know I did. It couldn't have been the wind. There isn't even a breeze. It's still there. It's hiding in the brush. Something alive. An animal. A man. Hey, what is it? Somewhere back in the brush. I guess I scared it off with the gunshots. I start walking again, and the trembling in my legs works off. But my mouth and my throat, they're dry. I, I debate a few minutes before I reach for my canteen.
still no idea what time it is. Two, three in the morning. I don't know. Hunger pains are getting to my stomach. I got a bad headache. Worst thing is my mouth and my throat. I'm so thirsty. The muscles in my legs are getting numb. Oh, I can only sit down just for a minute. No, I got to keep walking. Got to stay awake. Keep walking. Somewhere inland now, north end of the island. A while back there, I thought if starvation sets in, I could always find something to eat along the beach, a dead bird or a dead fish. That illusion didn't last very long. They'd all be the same. Radioactive. What? Get out of here! Get out of here! Get away! Grabbed the gun flat in my hand. The sound came closer. I brought the gun back and I threw it with all my might. And I missed. I turned. I ran. Seems like hours running. I was running. I stopped only once, about 20 minutes ago. I my throat was so dry, I couldn't get my breath. I reached for my... I reached for my Geiger counter a minute ago. Maybe it happened when I was trying to get away. It doesn't make much difference anyway. Anyway, it's done. The counter's smashed. I'm here, finally. I'm at the beach. And it was just in time, too. The moon's gone down. It's dark again, pitch dark. I don't care. There's nothing. There's no water, no food. The gun's gone. Geiger counter's smashed. It's gone. It's gone, everything. Huh? It's followed me back. Still, still there. It's right up there in the brush. Right at the edge of the brush. It's waiting for me. It's waiting for me. But Jelly! Harrison, why don't you come? What happened? Why don't you come for me? Oh, what time is it? It's still dark. How, how long's the night? How long? What time? What time is it? Four o'clock? Five? What time? Oh, it's, it's just no use. Prayer. Yeah, say, say a prayer. Which one? Our Father who art in heaven. Hail Mary for us, pray for us, pray for us. I don't know how long it's been, I'm not sure. The edge of the sky looks gray, maybe getting light. I've gone down to the very rim of the beach. I'm facing inland, my back to the water. I haven't heard the sound lately. Last half hour, anyway. And I don't care. What? Over there. Over in the east. It's gray. The whole sky. It, it's getting light. It's getting light. Shelly and Harrison, they come for me. <laughs> I wasn't thirsty anymore. I, I wasn't hungry. I was alive. It was more than enough. Hey, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. A lousy boat conked out on us, Warner. Half a mile from transfer point. And had it fixed, it was dark. Wouldn't stand a chance of finding the island at night. Hey, what's the matter? You sure you're all right? You got your sidearms with you? Yeah, why? Up there. Straight ahead of you. Patch of brush. Want to take a look? Why? What's the matter? I don't know. I'll give it a look. Hey, what's it all about? 
I wish I could tell you. What do you mean? Hey, Warner, come here. Give a look. Come on. Yeah, what'd you find? Nothing. Just this wild pig here. Wild pig? Yeah, the islands are full of them. I think he's still alive, see? Mm. Barely alive. Look at the flash burns, the skin. <laughs> Pretty horrible. <laughs> wild pig. Yeah. You want to take care of it, Joe? Okay. Rest in peace. Amen. Huh? Warner, you sure everything's all right? It's been a long night, Bert. Let's go home. A anything we can do for you now? Anything you want? Yeah. I want to sit down. I just want to sit down. Suspense, a true story presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Richard Widmark, will return in just a moment. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States, and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and in Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light. You're always right with Autolite. And now I'd like to present our producer-director, Elliot Lewis. Thank you, Harlow. Dick, I'm very happy to announce that a poll of the regular radio performers who support our guest stars each week on Suspense has named you as the winner of the first annual Golden Mike Award as Best Actor of the Year 1951, on our Theater of Thrills series. And here's something for the mantle over the Widmark fireplace, our Golden Mike Trophy. Well, Elliot, this is one of the nicest things that ever happened to me in radio. And I, well, I just can't tell you how grateful I am. But I think a great deal of the success of all your fine suspense shows should go to the players who took part in this poll. Anyway, thanks a lot. Next week, the winner of the Suspense Golden Mike Award for Best Actress, Miss Ann Baxter who with song and story will tell of the death of Barbara Allen. The dramatization will be heard on... Suspense! Suspense was transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music written by Lucian Morowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. How Long Is the Night was written for Suspense by James Mosier from a true report by Warner Tobe, Jr. Featured in the cast were Jack Crucian, Joseph Kearns, and Herb Butterfield. Richard Widmark's next starring release for 20th Century Fox will be My Pal Gus. You can buy Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs, Autolite staple batteries, and Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.